Uh, so, Ray, you get to go next. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Ray Hackey, and I'm an attorney with the Pacific Justice Institute Center for Public Policy, which will be opening an office here in Wisconsin next week. I stand before the committee today in my capacity as a constitutional law attorney to explain why AB 196, if enacted, would survive a legal challenge. The U.S. Constitution's Equal Protection Clause applies whenever a state or one of its agencies, including a high school athletic association, treats distinct classes of similarly situated persons differently. Actual girls and boys who say, boys who say they're girls are not similarly situated. Males who self-identify as female have a different biological makeup than actual females. In that regard, they are the same as males who don't identify as female. Uh, trans advocates would tell you that biology doesn't matter as much as psychology, but biological males have distinct biological advantages over actual females, and one need only need look at the WIAA's high school track and field record book to see this. The state record in the boys' 100 meters is 10.33 seconds. The fastest girl to run that event in this state did it in 11.38, and that's a full second slower, which may not seem like much, but in the 100 meters, where a thing where races are typically decided by a tenth of a second, that's a huge gap. The boys' high jump record is seven feet. The girls' record is six feet. That's a foot gap. The boys' shot put record is 67 feet, six inches. That's 18 feet longer than the girls' record of 49, four and a quarter. And that's with the girls throwing a lighter shot put, eight pounds opposed to 12 pounds for the boys. So now the Journal of Medical Ethics published a study in 2019 demonstrating that even males who undergo hormone treatments to transition do not lose much in the way of muscle mass or power and can easily rebuild those things through training. It's called the Equal Protection Clause, not the Special Protection Clause. States need not treat that which is different, in fact, as though it is the same in law. It is an undeniable scientific fact that a boy who says he's a girl is different from someone who is biologically female. Gender-based classifications are permissible under the Equal Protection Clause when they serve important governmental objectives and are substantially related to those objectives and reflect reasoned judgments rather than prejudice. Remedying past discrimination against women, meaning biological women, in educational settings, which is the whole reason behind Title IX, uh, including in inter interscholastic sports, is an important governmental objective. Uh, given the biological advantages that males have over women, uh, AB 195 is substantially related to the objective of giving girls and women a meaningful opportunity not only to participate but to be competitive, if not victorious, in interscholastic athletics. Uh, the, uh, multiple uh, courts across this country have found that um, maintaining sex by, uh, or meaning, maintaining sex segregated sports is the best, if not only way, to, protect, uh, to give women meaningful access to uh, sports because otherwise they will be reduced to spectators, uh, uh, cheerleaders, and runners up in their own competition. And we're already seeing that in Connecticut, okay? You know, one final note, transgender athletes are not being denied the opportunity to compete. They are, they are demanding to be able to dictate the terms on which they are able to compete. Essentially, they are asking the legislature to ignore biological realities in order to, play, to placate their feelings. A male All who right, says- three minutes is up. Okay. Uh, and I'll take questions from committee. Uh, for I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the thing, so I apologize. Yeah, I switched to my phone because I- I was tired of operating this tiny little thing, so that's why you didn't hear the beeper that time. Uh, I'll start out with a question for you here. You mentioned Connecticut. Was that was that high school? Connecticut was high school. It's the CIAC, the Connecticut Interlastic uh, Athletic <clears throat> Conference. Okay. Uh, and so uh, I, I will note there that uh, two boys, uh, biologically male Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood, have literally rewritten the record books. The top 15 sprint uh both indoor track and which they have there. I don't know if they have it here in Wisconsin, but outdoor track of uh, the top 15, uh, you know, sprint records now belong to biological males, not to actual girls. All right, and I will give myself permission for a follow-up. Uh, and those have happened just in the last couple of years? Yes, uh, since, since 2016, I believe. Okay, all right, any other questions? Representative Wickers. Thank you. And so because of your credentials uh, as a lawyer, could you explain to this body under the law, we have uh, a statistic that, that was given that less than 
ten per two percent of high school students identify as trans, and not all of them are athletes, so that number is even less. And if one of those athletes is affected mentally because of their not able to participate, that could be uh, that could be a, a, a tragedy. On that, looking at the law, if one child, one athlete is not able to reach their potential because of allowing transgender kids, how does that affect current law that that child is denied because of allowing this when their rights to participate against their own sex? Could you explain that? I would be happy to, Your Honor. It's, it seems to me that we're trying to advance the group, uh, the rights of one group at the expense of the rights of another. Uh, women, uh, as uh, uh, Representative Dittrich uh, have testified, and, and the women on that side of the room, uh, the left side of the room, have testified, uh, women have long been denied uh, opportunities to compete in athletics. Uh, that's the whole, uh, I mean, Title IX had nothing to do with sports initially, but uh, you know, after uh, after it was enacted, you know, the whole point of it was to give biological women, uh, you know, gr uh, increase their opportunities in, in education. And courts have found that that includes interscholastic athletics. So we're advancing the rights of one group at the expense of another. So basically, you know, if you're a girl going out for a girl's team and, you know, you're displaced by a biological male, uh, that, that's going to affect her, too. You know, uh, the, que uh, the question is, who loses out? Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, they've included co-ed in this bill, because this way, uh, you know, those who want to compete strictly against members of their own biological sex can. Those who want to test themselves against members of the opposite sex can. Uh, and basically, so, you know, we're, so we're talking about the opportunity for uh, biological women. And to be honest, uh, we, we, we shouldn't even have to make that clarification. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's common sense. There's men and there's women. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's based on biology, not psychology. So, uh, you know, I, I, biolo biology matters, and courts have recognized that. All right, Representative Considine, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I had two questions, but I have to limit to one, so I'll <clears throat> take a crack at this one. Um, you mentioned, and we've talked about co-ed sports. To have that be equal... Sounds to me like this bill, and I wasn't here earlier, I got caught behind a railroad train. Um, this bill is going to require our schools to create a whole nother level of competitive sports. Okay, and I think our schools are struggling already, um, and I'm a little concerned about that. So you are saying, yes, this bill is going to require our schools to be legal to create a co-ed level of sports that matches the same kind of support that schools are giving to male and female sports at this moment. Yes, they, they might have to create like a third class of team, whether at the varsity level or the junior varsity or fro or fresh off or freshman. Um, and, you know, uh, I don't know if you've received a copy of it. I did submit uh, a copy. I, I am the author of a legal journal article called uh, Girls will be boys and boys will be girls, borrowing from the kink song Lola. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's been published in uh, three different uh, legal journals. Uh, and one of the things it talks about is that, you know, if we were to move away from uh, a, a sex segregated model, uh, you know, uh, we'd have to move to a model that you, you typically see in football, you know, in, in, in like Pop Warner, you know, where they have, you know, ba based on weight and ability level and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and that would be uh, it, 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 it might create some financial challenges, but I, I think, uh, you know, if there I, I think I think it can be done. Um, so and, and I think it is also the best way, if not the only way to give girls meaningful uh, girls who want to compete exclusively against other girls and to give those who are, you know, especially since they're, t they're competing for scholarships, uh, they're uh, they're competing for attention from college recruiters. Uh, you know, it's the bit, you know, if if they're going up against males and, you know, basically having to settle for third place at best uh, in their own races, as, as, as has been happening in Connecticut, I'd say that's a problem. 
Representative Pope. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, once again, I'm confused because I understood Representative Considine's question to you to ask if passage of this bill would require Wisconsin to create a third level for sport activity for transgender youth. And your answer to him was yes. So is that going to be part of the repercussions of passing this bill that constitutionally we will be required to do this? I, th I think constitutionally, think, uh, uh, just having uh, teams for uh, biological boys and biological girls is fine. Uh, I think I think constitutionally that's you know, and multiple courts have uh, you know I, I could I could give you a copy of my article. I'd be happy to send it to you. I uh, there's I cite to plenty of the cases in that. Uh, um, however, you know th this does you know give them an opportunity. It's it's is if they if they want to compete against. You know, in a different classification, you know, like I said, the Equal Protection Clause does not require that which is different in fact to be treated as though it is the same in law. And by those who self-identify as female, even despite the fact that they're biologically male, are different than somebody who is biologically female. There shouldn't be any confusion about that. Uh, Representative, would you like Ledge Council to I do, chime because, in on that? Because if, if we're going to be requiring our schools on the limited budgets that we have now to create a third level of sports that is equal to the ones for females, the ones for males, despite the fact that there may not be enough kids to play. Are, are we going to be in danger of being in a position where school districts can be sued successfully for not having this third level? So the bill is not requiring that every school create um, a co-ed male and female sports team. It's requiring that every sports um, sport and team that exists has to be designated as one of those three. And then it also provides that pupils of the male sex cannot participate on teams or sports that are designated as female. But females can participate on male teams. Right. The bill is not prohibiting Females Biological participating female. on teams designated for males. However, that would be left up to you know, the WIAA or or the sports leagues to make that determination. It's not being prohibited under the bill. All right. Thank you for providing. I'm that. still confused. So. <laughs> All right. We will move on to the next speaker then. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I, I missed that. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. I guess. With, with this bill, would it have an effect upon FIAD classes with transgender students having to where, progress? To, uh, um, effect upon what classes? I didn't quite understand. In FIAD, FIAD classes where physical education. Physical, in physical Wisconsin, education, we tend yes. to say FIAD. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, uh, my apologies. Uh, I don't necessarily speak Wisconsinese. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm a native Californian. I live in Oregon now. Um, but anyway. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it, I don't think it would affect phys ed. I mean, I, I think right now, you know, I, I don't I don't know if uh, they have uh, sex segregated phys ed in schools. Uh, some schools some school districts do. Some school districts don't. I've I've uh, been in uh, combined phys ed classes before, and if if you're in a combined phys ed class, then you know it's uh, then I then I really don't think it matters. You know how you identify. I mean, you're you're, you're among both boys and girls. Well, because people were talking about lawsuits if we didn't change things. I'm just wondering if somebody was in a FIED class that was all females and they were transgender and they hurt someone, would there be a, would there be a lawsuit if this bill was passed? I, 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 don't, I, I think that would be a separate issue. I, I, I think that would be, a, 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 we're talking about interscholastic sports here. Uh, phys, uh, physical, phys ed is not interscholastic sports. That would, I think that would fall under the category of uh, intrascholastic, if anything, or intramural or just kind of contained within the classroom of, you know, the public school. Uh, so, you know, so a, a, a school could perhaps subject itself to liability in that circumstance, uh, but that's, 
I, I think that's not germane to what this bill is about. And uh, uh, it, it could, I think that could, I, I think a school could be setting it up self up for liability in that circumstance because let's face it, the girls, you know, if they're playing volleyball or something and, you know, uh, a, a six foot 10, 290 pound male, you know, spikes it on the little five foot one, uh, 105 pound girl, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a problem. I, 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 could, I could see a school setting itself up for liability in that circumstance. So, okay, so you're saying it potentially could be a problem? Potentially. Okay, thank you.